Morning people, welcome back to F Politics. So, why did I just call Richard Tice the chair of the Reform Party and a man who has tried to sue me for libel in the past the patron saint of terrorists? I said that because I'm tired of right-wing politicians and journalists claiming that they're the protectors of our national security. Especially because all the evidence of the last eight years proves the exact opposite. Now I'll be honest with you, in this specific circumstance Richard Tice is correct because the Home Office should not be calling the people it's arrested during the riots criminals until they've been convicted. So why am I complaining about Richard Tice if he's right? Because nobody successful in politics is an idiot. They often know what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's false. They choose when to be right to further their agenda. Because a couple of weeks ago, Richard Tice was complaining that one of the Southport rioters had already been convicted and sentenced. Meanwhile, the people who got in the fight in Manchester Airport, where the police officer stamped on that man's head, those people hadn't been sentenced yet, but that was still part of an ongoing investigation, with a new branch of that investigation being announced that day. Because a situation where a police officer stamps on a suspect's head is obviously going to be a bit more complicated than a crowd of racists attacking police officers in mosques. But Richard Tice didn't care about due process and innocent until proven guilty back with Manchester Airport, even though it was an ongoing investigation. So why is he up in arms and defending the terrorists who flooded our streets this last month, making sure they're given the benefit of the doubt? Again, these people pick and choose when they're going to be right in order to further their agenda. Which brings me to my main point, because the violence that we saw this last month directed at ethnic minorities, Muslims, police officers, in towns and cities across the UK is probably the most widespread crisis of terror, aka terrorism, this country has seen in years. And this isn't just me saying this, the police are saying that right-wing extremism, including white supremacy, is the fastest growing national security threat in the UK. And who's been supporting these terrorists? Right-wing politicians, the same people who always tell us they care about national security. And let's be 100% clear about this, the people who've been attacking minorities and police officers this last month, they are terrorists. They meet the literal definition. They were using violence for political reasons. And when they argue that it was about immigration, well, immigration is a political reason. We can solve the problem. We need to end mass immigration now, to send a message to people we understand. Not to mention the Southport attacker, he was born in the UK to immigrant parents. So if you're saying that this is about immigration, you're saying that your target is anybody of immigrant descent which is objectively racist. So all that defense does is say that you're not just terrorists, you're racist terrorists. And politicians like Reform MP Lee Anderson have been saying again and again that we should just listen to these terrorists. He called the people who got their heads stamped on by police in Manchester Airport animals, but the terrorists? No, they need to be heard. And now we have Richard Tice basically being the public defender of racist rioters. Again, you can see their agenda by who they have sympathy for. And as we've discussed in previous videos, Nigel Farage, the head of the Reform Party, was spreading the conspiracy theories that got those rioters on the streets in the first place. So right-wing politicians have been the instigators and defenders of one of the biggest waves of terrorism this country has seen in recent years. But let's wind the clock back a bit further. What did right-wing politicians and journalists do during COVID? I'm shaking hands. I was, at a, I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus patients and I shook hands with everybody. And the UK ended up with the highest excess death rate in Europe during the first wave, with 30,000 lives being lost because they didn't lock down on time at the start. And even Boris Johnson's main hype person, Nadine Dorries, was saying that that was because of Boris Johnson's complete disregard for experts. I think he was the only person asking the question, how do we not lock down when the information he was permanently being given was you have to lock down. This is what you have to do from the scientific advisors, the medical advisors. And what was Richard Tice doing? He was arguing against lockdown in the most insane ways. The Great Barrington Declaration, which is the better way, the other way of dealing with the coronavirus. Now, the Great Barrington Declaration said that everybody who's not clinically vulnerable should just return to normal. It said that in October 2020. And I spoke to a Harvard professor of epidemiology at the time, and here's what he said about that. If you have a very large number of infections, an unmitigated epidemic in the under 50s, mm. you're still going to have severe strain on healthcare. Because otherwise we get the same problems about other, other routine care being um, put on hold because of COVID cases. Indeed. And for the record, despite what people like Richard Tice would have you believe, nobody was arguing that we should just stay in lockdown forever. We know that lockdown doesn't eliminate the disease or grant herd immunity. Therefore, 
the only purpose of lockdown is to, is to flatten the curve enough so the NHS can survive and give us enough time to make our economy COVID secure so that when we open back up, it doesn't cause an immediate spike. You have in that um, articulated probably the clearest understanding of what the actual purpose of shutdowns is from any non-epidemiologist that I have heard. But people like Richard Tice, they didn't care. Look at this insane tweet arguing that only 2% of deaths for people below the age of 80 were linked to COVID, but that doesn't mean that COVID patients of all ages weren't filling up hospital beds regardless of whether they died, meaning that because the disease was spreading so fast, we couldn't treat other diseases, which meant that mortality rates in general then rose. And look at the insanity of arguing that we don't lock down for cancer. Dude, you can't catch cancer from another person. Not to mention, technically, it's because we didn't lock down on time that the hospitals got filled with COVID patients and so we couldn't treat cancer. So if anything, we should have locked down for cancer. But again, these self-proclaimed champions of national security that go after minorities because they supposedly care about protecting the kids, protecting women, protecting British lives, they just don't care about British lives. And we can wind the clock back even further to Brexit. Every medical body in the country was saying that Brexit would damage the NHS, and it has. And who was supporting it? All the right-wing politicians. And the British Medical Association, which represents about 150,000 doctors across the UK, said a no-deal Brexit, so the worst kind of Brexit, would be especially damaging for a pandemic. They said that in 2018, so two years before the pandemic. And what was Boris Johnson saying in 2019? I think it's a great shame that we've missed the opportunity to come out at at no deal. And even though it's been confirmed that Brexit was damaging our NHS during the pandemic and that a no deal Brexit would have made things even worse, a no deal Brexit is still the official policy of the Reform Party. Again, these people do not care about British lives. And when someone like me, a lefty Remainer, was arguing about the risk to British lives, here's how a right wing politician reacted to that. The Royal College of Nurses, the Royal College of GPs, the Royal College of Radiologists, the Royal College of Midwives, and the British Medical Association, which represents over 140,000 doctors across the UK, said that Brexit will be bad for the NHS. No, that's an opinion. <laughs> and okay, at, next, at the end Mark, of the day, Mark, Femi, Mark, there's, wow. there's, there's one way to find out, Mark. isn't there? Next, let, 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 let's try it. Let's try it. And we already know that tens to hundreds of thousands of lives were lost due to the poverty caused by right-wing austerity policy. So who knows how many lives are being lost because Brexit is taking 40 billion pounds a year out of the public purse. So on the biggest national security threats to British lives that this country has seen in the last decade, whether it's NHS crises, the pandemic, cost of living crises, the recent terrorism, right-wing politicians have been making all of those threats worse. So I never want to hear anybody say that right-wing nationalism is protecting the nation when it's endangering us all. I'm Femi. Make sure you follow F Politics or Politics Doesn't F You. Have a great week.